Last week, I played my brand new Arturia Astrolab at Coachella, and I did a video giving my first impressions and documenting the process of working with it and playing it for the first time on a gig. That video was my really rough first impression. Literally, the keyboard came to me like hours before my plane ride to California, and I got my presets and settings and sound banks and all that together like on the plane, literally. And that was cool. I think like the trial by fire method of discovering gear is kind of fun, but I didn't have any of the VSTs yet, and I've since discovered and dug into Arturia pigments. And now everything is different. And you might be saying, bro, you just discovered pigments? Yes, I just discovered pigments. Fight me. Pigments is great. I probably don't have to tell you that. Uh, I don't know if it's generally thought of as like a live thing, but to me, anything that sounds great is something that I'm gonna wanna use live. So today I'm here in Memphis, Tennessee, and I'm gonna do the whole set using pigments. Girls, you know you better. Watch out. Come on, come on. Okay, there's a few staple sounds that I need. I guess I'm going to either build them from scratch or tweak presets. Okay, I need like a slidey R&B sine wave pad kind of thing for killing me softly. So I'm going to start with the most basic sine wave patch, which is actually the default patch in pigments. Uh, it's just a sine wave and the mod wheel is adding like a little bit of vibrato. Like that. Can I add some chorus? Just a little bit. A little bit of a softer attack and a little bit of a softer release as well. Cool. Okay, that's cool. I think it probably needs a little bit more character than that, so I'm going to set envelope two <clears throat> to modulate the wavetable position just a little bit. Something like that. Oh yeah. And I need a similar sound for how many mics, but I need it to have some like crazy modulation stuff going on. So I'm gonna start with that same default sine wave patch, but I'm gonna make the pitch bend go up and down an octave. Gonna shift that wavetable position just a bit. And then from there, we're gonna turn on the sample engine and we're going to add a bowed water phone. I don't even know what a bowed water phone is. And we're gonna take this sample and we're gonna make it play in reverse so we get this kind of like ghostly, crazy effect. And then I probably want some options for like playing with the sound on the fly. So I'm going to map some ring shifter to macro one. Also gonna map some bit crusher to macro one. And then both those together on macro one sound like this. Pretty cool. Very cool. How many mics till we rip on the tape? Send me money. Send me money. How many mics? Send me money. 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 But I'm going to take that first one, down tune it by two octaves, down tune the second one by two octaves, down tune the third one by one octave. Okay, detune them a bit. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Uh, and then we're going to have envelope two doing some filter modulation to give it that bounce. Ooh. And we'll layer it with a sample. Okay. So yeah, Pigments is sick. It's a great sound design tool. Honestly, most of what I want to do in it, I can't do with the Fujis. Like the other day, I made this sick patch trying to imitate the AOL dial-up sound. I 
I got all kinds of crazy modulations in there mapped to all the macros, which is one of the things I love about pigments, how you can just route anything to anything. I played this at rehearsal the other day and Miss Hill was like, no, which is fine. I'll just keep it for myself. Thank you very much. <laughs> 